This is Chris from Hurricane Electric with your IPv6 update. As we mentioned in Webcast 34, the transition on IPv6 will involve dual stacking of protocols as well as tunneling. We received a few questions about tunneling, so we thought we might go over the basics again. Tunneling, of course, is the process of encapsulating IPv6 packets and IPv4 packets so that they can travel across networks which haven't yet enabled v6. There are two basic types of tunnels, dynamic and static. Dynamic tunnels simplify maintenance because they are configured automatically depending on packet destination addresses and routing. Static or manual tunnels, on the other hand, have traffic information available at each endpoint of the tunnel, which gives you extra security against injected traffic. TechWorld.com published an article last week that had an interesting analogy. Think of all the sites and services that are accessible only via IPv4. That's your ocean. Now think of the services which you can access via IPv6. Those are the islands in the ocean. Tunnels can be created to reach those IPv6 islands. Eventually the roles will switch and there will be IPv4 islands which will need to be bridged across an ocean of IPv6. You want to keep monitoring your tunnel environments and to remove them when you're able to use more dual stack equipment. Years down the road you don't want to be troubleshooting an endless series of tunnels. A full migration to IPv6 without the use of tunnels is, of course, the end goal. Remember, if possible, moving to an ISP that can provide native IPv6 is the best overall option and the most efficient starting point for your IPv6 migration.